Good day, everybody. My name is Todd Stanley. I'm the man who takes people out in the field that has them either live interact with or eyewitness a Sasquatch. It's my Throwback Thursday video. Uh, this is going to be a pretty cool... I don't know if I've talked about this footage for a while, but uh, I'm going to get in some, some pretty cool... Uh, I'm just looking at my footage and I don't think people have realized. I'm going to show this rock that got tossed down a mountain at me from a Sasquatch and, uh, and show some, some pretty impressive Sasquatch footage that I have. And uh, we'll just talk about it and get into some more details because it's always, honestly, I could literally make a documentary about every piece of footage I get and me doing little 10 minute segments in my documentary or talking about them in a short little segment. It never does it justice. There's always so much more. There's always so many awesome questions that people have and they just have no idea what how much work went into getting this and how much failed effort and how much pain and suffering and the, just the crap that I had to go through through all this stuff. So this is my Throwback Thursday video. We're gonna have an excellent show today, so stay tuned. For the past 10 years, I've been conducting expeditions, documenting chronicles, and interviewing people pertaining to the subject of Sasquatch. With over 20 years worth of hardcore backcountry expedition experience into the most remote regions, I've tracked and studied various North American species that have had little to no exposure to civilization. I am a student of many disciplines, trained in the art of tracking by a Cree Nation's elder and a military sniper. My skill sets include camouflage techniques using the terrain and its features to mask ground movement, survival, evasion, and escape techniques. I've been able to see for the first time some complete segments of Todd Standing's filming of Sasquatch, and uh, I am firmly convinced that he has filmed Sasquatches and that he has, what he has portrayed in his documentary are indeed very close portraits, in fact, of the Sasquatch face. So before we get into the footage, I want to talk about this. Uh, this was so crazy. Um, I, I just, I can't believe I, I had to deal with this and people just kind of look over it like it's no big deal. So what you're going to see here is, first of all, I have to tell you that uh, I don't have this original footage anymore. Uh, back when I was doing uh, the television, uh, when I was doing the radio show with Jeff Meldrum uh, called Bigfoot North Radio, I got pretty famous. People knew about my DNA and stuff. So some some jerk broke into my house and stole my computers and my hard drive and took some of the, the Sasquatch uh, evidence and DNA and scat that I have, which is no big deal because I'm not saying my footage is gone and I don't have it anymore. I have the footage. It's just I don't have the raw footage anymore because my computers were stolen. And whatever, you jerk, whoever stole my stuff, kiss my ass, I got more DNA. So, and I never saw anybody come out with, with that piece of DNA that I had uh, that was a pretty nice specimen. But anyways, I can get more. I, I do real Sasquatch research. I'll get more DNA, more scat. And I did. I did and I have and I had it analyzed. So but that's, that's a whole other topic. So anyways, the problem with this footage is you'll hear, it's from a, a documentary that I made uh, called, uh, just called Expedition 4 where I got the video four footage of uh, the Sasquatch I called Jane. In the documentary, I filmed it and and produced it way back in 2010. And I, I call Jane a male. And you should know what changed me about that, what me, made me realize it was a female. And really when I was, it, just, it was my, uh, my elder, my teacher, uh, my native teacher just had one look at her and said, oh, you filmed a female. And he explained to me how important that was and why it was so cool. And what you must understand is, so we'll look at that footage right now. This is at 30% speed. And what's so amazing about this is, well, my native teacher, he was, he just, when you learn from a master, and he's a master of the wilderness. That guy, my God, he was brilliant and amazing. He would spend winters, he would spend years alone in the wilderness surviving. So he was, he was at a level that, I don't know if, if that even exists anymore. He was that good. So whenever he just said something, I just shut up and listened. I didn't need an explanation. When he told me that was a female, that was a female. And what actually fell into place later on is what I realized in the tracks that I had witnessed that day is so I had, I'd come in through a snowstorm, a horrible snowstorm. And the reason I was able to navigate is I was following a creek for the most part. And what I did was I took an audio recording device and I threw it in a cave. And then I got out of that cave with uh, uh, just... The cave was by a creek, so I got out of the cave and I didn't leave any tracks that I was coming out. I walked backwards into my tracks. Anyways, I got out of that cave. So when the Sasquatch came down looking for me, 
because they knew I was there. I had an audio device. They were staying outside of the cave and they, you know, they had to get brave and go in the cave and check out and, and deal with me. And that was going to take a little bit of time. It was a diversion tactic is what I was doing. But what I didn't realize, it's amazing about the Sasquatch, is when the males go out to get you or go make a defense from the outer perimeter, the females make an inner perimeter around the main area where the young are. So I had actually gotten past the males and I heard them going past me. I was in my specialized, I call it a Gigantopithecus cloaking device or cloaking suit. It was a lead lined ghillie suit where even if ESP is real, even if you can feel and sense me, you're not gonna get anything through that ghillie suit. It had a lead foil that was built into the ghillie suit and the ghillie, it was more like, it wasn't actually a ghillie suit, it was a ghillie cloak. It was a whole big cloak. So I was like a moving piece of grass and bush and snow. So, uh, Anyways, and then I got into the position to film this female Sasquatch, and I, I always speak of her as a female. I'm, I'm very, very convinced it's a female because of the lack of facial hair, and uh, just, just you listen to your teacher. When, when you have some brilliant, amazing person that just knows, you just, I don't know, you shut up and listen if, you, if, you, if you're respectful and appreciative of that that elder, and he just told me it was a female, and after that, and it was, so I made this documentary. I was calling this particular Sasquatch individual, I was calling him, I was referring to her as him, and then I got that straightened out. So, but anyways, so this is the other piece of footage that I'm going to show you is, uh, is the boulder coming down the hill. So what happened was, as I was leaving, I tell us to people, I, the Sasquatch dominate me, and they, they manipulate me, and they, they, they tell me where to go, and people are like, how they do that? And it was a freaking, I can't believe I got this piece of footage. What you're going to see right now, so let me play it for a second, and, and I'll come right back. Let's play it. Again, there's a bit of audio voiceover because I don't have the raw footage, but listen to the boulder coming down the hill. Absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. It did seem like they were trying to move me in a certain direction. They were trying to get me back into the woods. I, mean, I, I, just, I just had no intention of doing that. So you see that? Now, if you look at that, if you've ever played football, that boulder looks like a football. And when a football starts rolling, it's totally unpredictable. Like you don't know which way it's going to go. They'll, they're, they're weird the way they wobble. They do this bubbly wobble thing. I'll tell you, I only have a tree in front of me. And I heard the Sasquatch made like a growl at me because he didn't want me to go that way. Basically, it was a left or right turn. And the snow on this side of the mountain hadn't melted. Like it was mostly melted where I'd filmed Jane maybe three or four hours before. So this side of the mountain wasn't melted. That's why there's snow on the ground here and not so much where I took that footage. But anyways, uh, I heard him growl at me and I could hear that boulder coming through the air. He's making a funny sound. When you throw something huge like a boulder like that, like that's probably conservatively, that's an 80 plus pound boulder. It's huge, in case you didn't see that. Now, you see how enormous that thing is? You see how it's wobbling all over the place? So I hit record after the Sasquatch growled at me. You cannot hear it coming through the air because, I don't know, you're hearing things with your ears that the camera mic's just not picking up. And I remember, that was a camera, that was a 2007 camera that I had, you know, filming it in 2009. So it was a two-year-old camera. It, it was good for the time, but just wasn't picking up that sound. So I heard it coming through the air, and then when I saw that thing hit the ground, man, I'll tell you, <laughs> it's, it's scary. Look, when I look at that, man, if that boulder would have hit me, I'm very grateful that it went the direction it did, because if it would have went on the other side of the tree, it might have hit me. It would have, let's be honest, that would have killed me. I mean, busted both my legs. I'm literally at least two days hiking out, like moving at a good speed, hiking uphill. I didn't have any, I didn't have any weapons of it. I had bear bangers, which are useless and bear spray. And actually I didn't have bear spray, I just had bear bear flares, I called them. And uh, yeah, like no, no, no cell phones, no tracking devices, no Garmin like I have. Basically I had a broken a leg. And if any, any of you know about how serious, it would have busted something, ripped my hip, smashed me. It'd have been brutal. Like I'd have been severely, severely injured and I wouldn't have survived. That was dead meat for sure. So Something tells me that the Sasquatch are really good at throwing boulders and they purposely threw it on that side of the tree and they purposely threw it when I had that tree blocking me because if I would have come out another 10 yards, I'd have had no tree and I'd been standing there looking at that boulder going, which way is it going to roll? And you saw how fast that thing is coming, man. That would have freaking really hurt me. But the purpose for that 
was he was trying to tell me, don't go that way. And believe me, you know what I did? I turned my ass around and I went the other way. There was there are times when you go left or right, and really that was the quicker way out, but that was still keeping me in Sasquatch habitat. And he said, no, 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 no. You're done in Sasquatch habitat. You get your ass out. So that's what that was all about. Uh, anyhow, and let's go, let's go back to, uh, so let's look at another piece of footage that I have here. So again, this is from my uh, video for expedition footage. I'll play a section of the documentary here for you. And uh, please accept my apologies. I called the Sasquatch animals back in those days. I know that really pisses people off. And uh, it shouldn't. I wish people wouldn't get upset about that. It's ridiculous. I'm an animal. I'm a mammal. You know what I mean? Like, let's just get over those ridiculous little paradigms. But uh, anyways, I'll play a little section of my documentary. Uh, Search and Rescue went looking for me. And then uh, we'll talk some more about some other stuff when I come right back. Hello, my name is Todd Stanley, and you're watching what my team and I are calling Expedition 4. As I announced last year on the website, this new Sylvanic area is where we are attempting to conduct a study of the species commonly referred to as Bigfoot. My team and I have been on over 30 expeditions into this region, and two by me have yielded significant close proximity contact with these animals. Although the first did not produce any photo or video evidence, it very nearly cost me my life. In fact, I'd have to say it was extremely fortunate to say the least that I even survived at all. We'll release the details of that expedition later this year. For this October 2010 expedition, although there certainly were significant dangers, including the grizzly bear confrontation, I suffered only minor injuries. So before I get into detail of the expedition itself, I'd like to thank Radium Police, as well as Kimberly and Invermere Search and Rescue. This region of the Rocky Mountains is certainly some of the most dangerous backcountry in the continent. Very few people ever use these trails, and a high percentage that do disappear or are killed. This area between Kootenai and Banff National Parks is where wildlife officers relocate bears and mountain lions that have become dangerous to people. And because of the locations and natures of my expeditions, my team and I have always had an understanding to never call search and rescue. I rarely stay on the trail, and more often than not, I'm in areas that are inaccessible to most people. This time, however, the very unusual circumstances surrounding my disappearance led my team to assume the worst. So police were contacted, and a search and rescue mission was implemented. Now let's take a look at the videos and photos taken. I have to say I'm very pleased with them. For the video, I zoomed in 20 times optical and obviously had no tripod. I remained in this position for at least 20 minutes while the animal you see in video four moved from one position to the next. I was situated over 50 yards away and downhill from his position. I was hiding beneath a large pine tree and covered by my ghillie suit. The snow was melting, so I was having to switch back and forth from video camera to still camera as water would drop down onto the lenses. He would regularly disappear from my line of sight, as I'm sure he was searching for me in a direction of about 180 degrees. This animal certainly knew I was around, but I suspect that he had no idea how close I actually was. The specific details of what exactly happened that day will be explained in detail through a chronicle that will be posted on the Sylvanic website as soon as I can. Just like the uh, Video 2 and Video 3 chronicles, and hopefully I'll actually do uh, a video like I did the Video 3 reenactment where it shows step by step exactly uh, where my position was, the animals that I'm sure were around me relative to my position and what they were doing and why they were doing it because most assuredly what they were doing, it was, it was amazing how they had this spectacularly implemented plan to ensure that I didn't get into the spot I wanted. Um, the day watcher had discovered me and uh, I became aware of it. Moments later, he disappeared and I knew at that point that uh, he'd alerted the main group. And I expected that as a, in the past, these animals would simply move away. This group is entirely different from the previous group I was studying Sylvanic. Previously, they would become aware of us, they would simply move away and really have virtually no interaction with us after that. This species, I would say based on where they are, because the region that they uh, inhabit is overlooking an area where hunters hunt and kill. They see men with guns all the time from their high points up in the mountains. They stand their ground. These guys don't back away, they don't run away. They stand their ground and uh, they push me out. This has been a big reality check for me. Like I said earlier in the previous expedition, that I was on uh, last year in August when I was tremendously successful. I lost my video camera because they actually threw stones and logs and branches at me to the point where it injured me. 
so happy with that footage. I'm so proud I was able to have that success. It's uh, it's wonderful doing these Throwback Thursdays, looking at all the, the how far I've come. And uh, radium, those areas, you might recognize some of those shots because that was uh, all where I took Survivor Man in the radium episodes, which were I did two episodes of radium where he had incredible success. It's where I'm getting incredible success now with Expeditioners. Again, I'm, I'm now that I'm able to go to Radium and that's where the Discovering Bigfoot Research Center is, I mean, you can see just based on by how the Sasquatch are. And I've seen that female, Jane, since then. She's and I've seen her tracks now. I do identify her as a female just based on her body weight, her smaller foot, her thinner foot, uh, separate and different from the males. So I've, you know, it's been... That was 2009 I filmed that. It's been over a decade that uh, I've been seeing her and, and having interactions with her. So uh, taking Expeditioners out there has been absolutely wonderful. We had such a spectacular year. I'm really, really looking forward to next year as well. It's going to be so fun. So thank you so much for tuning in to this Throwback Thursday. I'll have my Sasquatch Sunday video. We'll be live Wednesday. So much more new stuff. Eventually, I'm going to start throwing new things into the mix. New documentary coming. So much on the way. Man, I want to talk about it. It's going to be such a fantastic year, 2020. So we'll keep plugging forward, and uh, we'll see you, see you soon. Thanks for tuning in.